go to their church. Uh, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, children, we love you. Bring me cookies as well. Praise God. Our vision is to equip people with the Word of God so that they can reflect the life, the love, and the power of God in their world. Whatever world you belong to, business world, civil service world, world you know, whatever you do, family, single, school, student, you are expected by God to be a life changer. You are the transformer in that community. Amen. Praise God. And the thing that helps you to get transformed is the Word of God. Praise God. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. Hallelujah. We're going to look at the topic, but before that, I want to wish all the fathers in the house Happy Father's Day and fathers-to-be. Happy Father's Day to you all. Okay, all right? Good. Good. My son brought me a very beautiful drawing, you know, uh, on Friday. And he forgot to give it to me. And after a while, after he has eaten, his senses came to him. Then he said, Daddy, Daddy, let me come. And he opened the bag and he showed me. But he didn't really want to give it to me. But I knew it was for Father's Day. So I had to snatch it and open it. It was <laughs> Happy Father's Day. I, I felt very proud. It's an honor to be a father. Amen? Amen. Praise God. It's an honor to be a father. To be a father or be a mother, it means God entrusted into your care his image and his likeness. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to talk to us today as a continuation of something the Lord instructed me to do, I think two weeks ago, when he told me to uh, pray and bless us and empower us to become employers. All right? God has been speaking to me. He said, empower people to become employers. God does not want us to be the employee. He wants us to be the employers. Amen? All right? In other words, what he's saying is that you are so blessed, so comfortable, that out of your blessing, there is a huge flow, a lavish flow to the point where other people are being cared for as a result of your life being blessed. Amen? amen. Come on, amen. amen. There is a place in the book of Chronicles where God said, Believe in the Lord your God and you shall prosper. Believe in his prophet and you shall be established. It's the other way around. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established, I think. You shall prosper. Okay, good. Believe, I think Second Chronicles 20, verse 20 or something like that. Yes, Second Chronicles 20, 20. If you can flip it there, confirm it for me. Second Chronicles 20, verse 20. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall prosper and believe in his prophet and you shall be established. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall prosper. Anybody there help me read if you if you get there before me. Verse 20. Any morning, next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall stand firm. Yeah, you shall be established. You shall be established. When you believe what God says to you, he establishes you. And he says, believe his prophets, and you will succeed. God's prophets, not psychics. Not Ouija borders, not voodoo. God's prophets who will speak God's word. Inspired by God's word. And the good thing about our church is that everybody here knows the word of God. So even if I made an error, you know how to correct it. Amen. So I feel very comfortable here. So in line with that, God said the first thing that we should do is to change the way we think. So the caption of today is the new way of thinking. 
we shall change the way we think. And I want to take this step by step through the Word of God, and I'm going to uh, uh, lay a foundation that we shall continue with next time. Amen? Amen. All right. I'm going to give you this one as your notepad. And I'm going to give to the prince as his notepad. Okay? Sorry, I couldn't fit it in. Remove it, and the notepad is there. That's a gift for you. I, get, I have one for you. This man and woman of God are going to give me a Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please write down what you, whatever scripture we are looking at, but more importantly, flip there. We can read every verse together. Praise God. Amen. All right. I'm going to ask you to sometimes read a different translation so we can see it in, in, the, in a different way. So please come along with me. All right. So a new way of thinking. One of the most uh, precious gifts that God has given to man is the ability to think. Hello? And the ability to make a decision. One of the greatest gifts God has given to man is the ability to do what? To think and to make a decision. But before that, let us, let us go back to the book of Genesis. We're going to look at it from the beginning and see. And this is talking about you. It's talking about you. This is talking about you. Genesis chapter 3. Uh, I'm sorry. Genesis chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Anybody there? Help me read. God spoke. Let us make humans in our image. That is chapter 1, verse 26. Let us make humans in our image. Are we all there? Okay. In our image. Image, the word image, I checked it out in the dictionary, and this is the meaning. Exact likeness. Exact likeness. A person strikingly like another person. And it's a tangible or visible representation. In other words, the exact likeness of God is who you are. Come on, amen? amen. You are the exact likeness of God. You are the exact likeness of God. You are the, and can, I want you to say to yourself, can you say, I am the exact likeness of God. Say it like you mean it. I am the exact likeness of God. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So you are the exact likeness of God. You are the exact likeness of God. You're welcome, Eugene. And uh, yes, no problem. And Grandma, you are welcome. Good. All right. So, in other words, when God said, "Let us make man in our image," He made you exactly the way He is. He is. God did not, when He made Adam, He did not intend for Adam to die. Now, let's go further. He said. Make them a reflecting our nature. So God designed you when he says in the image and likeness means you are able to reflect the nature of God. And what is our vision? Our vision is to be equipped with the word of God so we can reflect his power, his love, and his character. So our vision is in line with the original vision that God had when he created humanity. Amen. So they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. So that was God's original intent. Now, so God created human beings, and he created them godlike, reflecting his nature. He created them male and female, and the very first thing God did after he, he created the human being was to release a blessing to them. He blessed them, not cursed them. He blessed them. He didn't leave them vacant. He blessed them. How many of us have computers in our house? If you have your cell phone, then you know you have something. You have something computerized. A computer has a, a device, you know, it's proper. It, it's, it's inside that package called computer are programs. And the programs are designed in such, in such a way that they are designed to achieve a certain goal. Anything that is 
every computer has a hard drive, right? Your cell phone has a hard drive. And that hard drive, there are codes written in the hard drive so that those codes enable the computer to perform according to how it is designed. Amen? Now, when God created male and female, Adam and Eve, he, create, he, re, he programmed them to function in a certain way. He, he created them to function as people that have dominion. So in the area of dominion and success and prosperity and blessing, that was God's original intent. In other words, what God said was, God said to, this is Adam, Remember, please let me use you as an example. You know, he said, he said to him, Remax, prosper. Amen. Be successful. Yes. Replenish the earth. That's right. You know what I'm saying? What he's doing, he's depositing life into the hard drive of Remax. So Remax cannot be anything other than to do exactly the way you were programmed. Thank you, sir. You know what I'm saying? But you see, when God finished doing that, He blessed them, and He, he said for them to replenish. To replenish means to constantly supply, to constantly refill, to constantly bless. You know what I'm saying? So, in other words, when there is lack, you are there to replenish. Where there is something lacking, joy missing, you are there to replenish. Where hope is missing, you are there to replenish. Even where finances is lacking, you are there. Everything that makes life good, we are the replenishers. Amen? Amen? That is why sometimes God will just attract people to you, sometimes who have needs. Why? Because he sees you as the solution. You are not the one having the problem. I was lying down in bed, sick, and going through all kinds of things, and the doctor was checking and couldn't find nothing, and the scripture hit me. Mark hit me, says, and you shall lay your hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. The Bible didn't say, and Jerry shall lie in bed to receive hands laid on him. No, I am designed to be the healer, not the one lying in bed. And I said, so what am I doing here? If you know what I mean. The way God created us is the way he intends for us to function. My iPhone functions as Apple designs it. I have two computers. I have a MacBook Air. MacBook Air functions differently from a Windows computer. Because the owner is different and it's designed to function uniquely different. If you know what I mean. But after a while, when God finished... Uh, Doing that beautiful job of blessing, programming man, man, Adam and Eve to become successful. Satan got jealous. Mm -hmm. And then he came and deceived them. He lured them through the window of their eyes. He lured them through lust. When we say lust, lust has nothing to do only with sex. It, we can, people lost for faith, people lost for beauty, people lost for money, people lost for all kinds of things. So loss is not just about sex. A strong desire that is fleshy only. That is what is called loss. Amen? And he designed it. He attracted them through loss. And they disobeyed God. And when they disobeyed God, what happened? In the book of Genesis now, can we flip over to chapter 3? Go back to Genesis chapter 3, 17 and 19. And don't close, don't go from Genesis yet. We have one more passage to look at there. Are you there together? Can you see it with me? Okay, so now Satan has come through the snake and has deceived Eve to eat the fruit or to disobey God. And suddenly, when God came, he responded with a curse. All right? The first thing that came out of God's mind toward a human being was a word of blessing. So, the curse that came out of him was as a reaction to their actions that they took. I want us to bear in mind. That is why the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, if there is no reason for a curse to come, a curse will never come upon anything or anyone. There has to be first a reason. 
Look at verse 17 now. God told men, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from, don't eat from. See, when I say this, when I read this, and let me clarify, Bible is, God is not saying we shouldn't listen to our wives. He's not saying so. And I know here that nobody here is, going, is thinking like that. Alright? But the only reason why God said this was because he hadn't listened to the wife when the wife led in the disobedience of God. That was the only time. Alright. So he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from, then he says, to every ground, he said, the very ground is cursed. That was what God said to the man. The very ground is now cursed. The same ground that God made in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, and he said everything was beautiful. Now the word of a curse came upon the ground. And the word curse means evil or misfortune that comes as if in response or imprecation or a retribution. If you know what I mean. Okay. Because of you, getting food from the ground will be as painful as having babies is for your wife. Men used to say, thank God that we are not women to go through labor pain. But you know that feeding a family is as hard. Taking care of a family, being the head of the house is as hard. Just that the giving birth the baby comes in two minutes, two hours, and then it's over. The man's zone is every moment. Except he's sleeping. Alright? He said the ground will sprout thorns and weeds. And you will get your food the hard way. Alright? Planting and tilling and harvesting, sweating in the fields from dawn to dusk until you return to the ground yourself dead and buried. You started out of dirt and you'll end up dirt. That was a curse. Alright? That was a curse. And the curse was, mark my word, was on every living thing until Jesus Christ came. When Jesus Christ came, something else happened. Now, before that, when Jesus came, Jesus took the curse upon that curse that was resting upon humanity, he took it upon himself. And then he went to the cross and destroyed his own body together with the cross, with the curse. You understand what I'm saying? He took the curse that was upon man, when I say upon man, equally upon woman, and upon the offspring, upon mankind, upon humanity, took it upon himself, went to the cross, and destroyed his body. In the book of Galatians, if you can look at, look at it with me, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Bible says, Christ redeemed us from the self-defeating, cursed life by absorbing it completely into himself. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The self-defeating, cursed life, Christ absorbs it. How many of us are sponges in our kitchen? Or a piece of cloth? When the water is dropped on the kitchen counter, you mop it. It absorbs the liquid. Am I correct? Yeah. How, that is exactly how Christ absorbed that curse. He said, do you remember the scripture says that? Curse is everyone who hangs on the tree. That is what happened when Jesus was nailed to the cross. He became a curse and at the same time dissolved the curse. And now, because of that, the air is clear. I'm reading the message translation, okay? The air is clear. And we can see that Abraham's blessing is present and available to non-Jews. Praise God. All non-Jews. When they talk about all non-Jews, they're talking about Gentiles. And you are a Gentile if you are not a Jew born or born Jew. You are called a Gentile. All non-Jews. Now look at the last verse of that, that, the last line of that verse. We are all able to receive God's life. Hello? Hello? We are all, we all now have the ability to receive God's life, His Spirit, in and with us by believing 
just the way Abraham received it. This is a key. It's a key. I would, I, I would underline that verse in my Bible. God made me perfect. I sinned, was under the curse. Christ came, removed the curse, put it upon himself, and gave me the ability to enjoy God's life back all over again. 